So, Willa Marie, thanks for asking about a question that I actually hope more of you will ask in, in TLC, but any some of you may be watching this outside of TLC. The question is, um, how do we prioritize, I'm trying to find it again in, inside the chat, how do we prioritize our time with regards to actions done doing our business versus doing things for our business, or sometimes people say working in the business versus working on the business. So, uh, and Will and Mary chime in anytime, but the example you gave before we started recording was, um, you know, doing, working in your business might be um, planning, well, I guess you could say one or the other, you could say planning your upcoming class that you're teaching, like planning the material, the curriculum, right? Yeah, the curriculum, the lesson plan, lesson plan, etc. versus uh, working on your business might be getting the word out about the, the upcoming class. Uh, for me, actually, uh, that would be considered working, working the business as well. But anyway, we can talk about the layers of it. But um, so, I, so, so the key, the key uh, here, I'd say is, do you have a time limit for each of these activities? <laughs> Let's start there. Because I know for me, well, I, you know, each of these activities can actually be done as you could spend as much time as you want on them. Like planning the class, especially the curriculum development, content development, that is certainly a kind of a, what do you call those things? Um, accordion, right? Like you could spend 10 hours planning the, the, the content for a one hour class, but you can spend three hours or you could spend 30, 30 hours. And so there's, a, there's really a great danger uh, in, in not setting a time, a specific time limit, which is why, you know, in our, in our TLC program, we talk about, you know, having a structure for your week so that you naturally, when you have a structure for your week, you naturally say, well, I can't spend 30 hours planning for my class because I have to spend, you know, if I have to carve out those 30 hours for these 10 other activities. So I really can spend on average three hours per activity. Some activities only need half an hour. Some activities need five hours. So that is, uh, well, first of all, to, to answer your question uh, originally, which is how do we plan the priorities of our business? I'll, I'll give you um, two resource. Well, I'll give you one resource to make it really simple. I'm not sure why my camera just turned off. There it is. The, uh, the one resource I'll recommend uh, is the blog post that I have on um, business time. And I'm going to try to see if I can pull it up uh, here. If you Google um, George Cow business time, it should pull up. Yes, that's the one. Okay, <laughs> I'm agreeing with myself. Okay, so um, this is the one. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll um, yeah, if you, anyone who's watching this video later can just Google it, George Cow Business Time, and it should be this one. Are you spending enough time on your business? Now, it's not meant to be uh, a judgment. I actually, funny thing was, I tried changing the time, uh, changing the title, and then my blog uh, was having a glitch that day, so I couldn't change the title. But the idea is that this post gives you a 10 hour a week, see 10 hour a week structure for your calendar. And basically, if you haven't yet worked through this blog post to structure those 10 hours a week, I recommend doing that first. Now, um, if you have any questions about the structure, I'm happy to answer it too. Some of you may end up taking up to 20 hours a week for the structure that I say 10 hours a week, some of you are more efficient and you may be able to do 10 hours a week. But Willa Marie, I would say do that. That's, the, that's my prioritizing structure. And, and then once you've done that, then we have this next level question of, okay, you've structured those 10 slash 20 hours a week, but now you have additional time that you can structure. How should you prioritize that? Um, and you gave me these very good examples of, Planning a class versus marketing for a class. Planning a class should definitely have a time limit. Marketing class, uh, for most of you watching this, you probably say, well, I don't know what else to do. I've spent two hours marketing class. I don't know what else I can do. Like, like it's almost like you have too little time marketing the class. So I would encourage you, and Will and Marie, let me ask you this question. Do you have a, a launch checklist or marketing checklist when you are announcing a class? Um, 
No, okay. I'm not. Yeah. No, not so, an official, like the way you say right steps out. No, I've yes. not done that. There's yes. resistance because I, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All that marketing resistance. Well, a lot of, you know, most people watching this are, <laughs> are with you on that. Um, it's not natural, right, to do marketing. Uh, and number two, it's not natural to be so, to be so in this mindset of checklists where like, okay, I'm going to, so this is what my encouragement to you is um, starting today, right? Start a marketing checklist for your class launches. Every time you announce a, a next class or program, start that marketing checklist now. And you might say, well, George, what's in the marketing checklist? That's a separate video. We can talk about that. But um, that, is, that is a highly valuable action of working on your business rather than just working in your business. So working in your business will be following a checklist. So that's a really good kind of way of describing it. Working in your business is following a checklist and working on your business is working on the checklist. And so every activity that you do, including course preparation. So when I prepare a class to teach, I have a checklist for how I prepare the class, including how much time do I do for each section of the checklist? And I'll, I'll show this again for those who haven't yet seen it. This is my uh, my hat manual. Hat manuals when we when we run a when we run a class when we run a business we put on different hats, and essentially it's just it's my series of checklists. I call it session steps. I have various names. I know it's confusing. Hat manual, session steps, checklist. It's all the same thing. It's basically okay. By 10 minutes, you know, within the first 10 minutes, if I'm preparing the first class session, I bring all on page. Oh, sorry. This is sp specifically about um, SEO, but bring all course ideas to a bullet point. Um, anyway, it, 10 minutes, I do this. The next 10 minutes, I do this. Sometimes I take longer than 10 minutes to do this. I, I need to work on my checklist a little bit better. But it's basically, you know, uh, an overall checklist. It, it, the details are going to confuse you right now. But I just wanted to show you that I have a checklist. By 40 minutes into my hour, I want to have done this. By 50 minutes into my hour, I have done that. My second session for, uh, for, for preparing for a class, first 20 minutes, I've done, you know, but the idea is that I have a checklist that has a time limit for each section. Now, of course, as I already mentioned, uh, we, uh, we can always improve our checklist. And every time I work on the checklist, I improve it just a little bit. 1% better <laughs> is my mantra. I borrowed that from James Altucher, but uh, yeah, so that, so essentially, how do we know whether to work on our business or in our business? The answer really is, it should always be both. You know, I have in my calendar at least two hours a week where I'm working on my business. One hour a week is working on my marketing checklists or experimenting with a future marketing technique, or, and then one more hour is working on my client service develop, client services, meaning how do I, how do I improve calls like this? Or how do I improve, uh, you know, my structure with my clients or whatever. So kind of like, yeah, that's how I think about it. You know, one hour a week, and I'm sure if I have extra time in the week, I'll spend more than an hour a week, uh, you know, on, on each area. So, and then the rest of my time, you know, is spent working in the business. But basically, working on your business is looking at the future. How can you improve? Working in your business is, <laughs> it's almost like, you know, just being an employee of your business. But yeah, Will and Marie, is that helpful? Yes, very much so. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for asking. Appreciate it. A follow-up question here from Moitza, thank you for asking, is... Um, you know, those 10 minutes, 20 minutes that I refer to um, that you spend on marketing activities or, okay, so like these 10 minutes or 20 minutes is actually specific, like, for example, this checklist, this is, this is kind of a confusing checklist. Let me see if I can find a, a better checklist for you uh, for those like, okay, so yeah, this is a good example. Okay, so this is my checklist. This is my, I have, I have a, you know, this is the beginning of my checklist for launching a class launching a course. And so for 25, the first 25 minutes, I will work on my MailChimp automation content, meaning when people sign up for the class, this is the emails they get. So I give myself 25 minutes to do these items. 
And then the next 15 minutes I spend working on the intake form for the class, the thank you page, the PayPal button, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next 10 minutes I work on the Zapier. So Mort says, is that clear what I mean by the 10 minutes, 20 minutes? So basically for everything I do in my business throughout the week, I have a checklist. And I'm always improving that checklist bit by bit over time. So that's why I can work with calm, joyful productivity because, you know, I don't have to worry about what I'm doing. I'm always just following my calendar, which if you think about it, the calendar is a checklist. The calendar is a checklist for how you run your day. If you don't have a checklist, it's tough to run a day. If you don't have a checklist, it's hard to run. It's hard to fly a plane. It's hard to do surgery. You know, pilots and surgeons, they're doing such important work that especially they need checklists. Those of us who don't need checklists to run our life, it's because the things we're doing are not life and death. But the more, right, the more you care about your work and doing it with calm productivity, the more you'd like to have a check, the more it makes sense to have a checklist. And that includes your day. If you don't have a, if you don't have a checklist for your day, you might feel some anxiety. Am I spending my time well? Well, if you have a checklist for your day, some people call it a to-do list, right? A to-do list is a checklist, uh, but so is a calendar. A calendar is simply a checklist with time limits. A to-do list drawback is it usually doesn't have time limits. So you end up spending too much time going down the rabbit hole for one item versus another item, et cetera. So um, yeah, Carrie, you just, you just asked that exact question. Can you have a checklist that you add time frames to that list? So that's what I do. So for example, if my, if my calendar says, a course launch part one. I know exactly what to do. Course launch part one. I go to my checklist. If it says an hour to do course launch part one, I know that this is my course launch part one. Now it might say what's one of two. It's it's because before my launch pre-launch week, I have two hours set aside. So for my first pre-pre-launch <laughs> hour, this is what I do. And my second pre-pre-launch hour, this is what I do. And then my pre-launch hour the Monday of the pre-launch, this is my 50-minute checklist. 30 minutes, I do this. Five minutes, I do this. So, um, so everything is very calm for me because uh, I can just follow my checklist all day long. And my calendar tells me what to do. And then my checklist tells me what to do within that hour. So that's why I mean by capture, categorize, calendar. We capture things we think we're going to do. We categorize them into checklists. And then we put those checklists in the calendar to say, ah, oh, 9 to 10 a.m., I do this checklist. 11 to 12 a.m., I do that checklist. So everything is very organized, everything. And therefore, your business moves along very consistently over the years, you know? So, and yes, Alexandra says, time logging helps you to understand how much time you need for each task. How did I figure out 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there? I didn't figure it out. I timed myself to say, how long does it take me to write an, an automation content for MailChimp? Well, let me time myself. Oh, it takes me about 25 minutes. All right, that's my checklist, 25 minutes for this. Now, over time, as I get faster at these things, if I had create more templates for myself, then I don't need 25 minutes. Maybe I'll end up needing 20 minutes or 15 minutes. Checklists and then templates. Templates are, okay, every time I do this checklist item, do I have a template for it? You know, Maybe that template is included in your checklist notes, but it could be a separate document. But those things we could talk about on how to organize these kinds of things. So I hope this is helpful. And I think that's all we have time for today. So... Thanks for being here and I hope this was helpful. Any other questions, let me know below.